Testing one, two. Test one, two. Check, check. What's up, guys? This is your friend Jonathan and host of the Heart Healthy Hustle Show. This podcast, where have you been? Jonathan, where have I been? I want to share with you guys a quick explanation as to what's been going on with the show. Uh, are you still doing the podcast? I'm asked that often. Yes, the podcast is still um, cooking with gas, if you will. We have a lot of episodes in the hopper. Uh, some um, some of the biggest guests that I've ever had on the show. Uh, we have literally famous people. We have you know people who aren't known well, but they're absolute experts in their field of finance, investing, things like that. We have amazing business owners, CEOs of very large companies that are world renowned at this point that, um, you know, things like this are, uh, you know, not even launched yet. Some of these episodes, uh, quite a few of them actually over, uh, quite a few in the hopper. Um, and it's like, why haven't you been publishing them throughout, you know, this illness time and all that? Um, I think the last time we published an episode was over a month ago. Um, so where have I been? I did want to provide a bit of an explanation. Uh, as you guys know, a lot of tragedy has been happening in our society and in our world. As you know, there has been a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos, and a lot of straight up tragedy uh, in in the way people are conversing, in the way people are attacking one another. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think we're all going to be fine. I think it's going to work itself out. I have hope in that. Um, you know, and regardless, I didn't feel that publishing episodes, it, it just didn't feel, I'm not going to say it didn't feel right, but I didn't feel motivated. I didn't feel ex extremely pumped to launch an episode. And so when I don't feel that, I know I need to be consistent and I have been for up to two years of the show, but I did think, uh, it was important for me to maybe not add to the pile of noise and things that we're all processing through right now and really just kind of let the show take a breath um, after two years of consistency in June, hitting that milestone. Um, but we do have episodes that are being prepared for launch. We do have interviews happening almost every week um, behind the scenes being recorded. And so the show is still here. It's alive and well. We're going to be publishing an episode roughly one per month and then up to two interviews per month, occasional solo episodes, Wanted to provide you with a quick update. Where have I been, Jonathan? I've been working. I have been um, accruing episodes in the queue. I have been um, at at this point in the show. It's quite interesting. We've we've had amazing guests and their publicists reaching out to us now, um, and so the tables are kind of turning. In that we're getting large guests uh, who are seeking to come onto our show. That's been happening for the last probably ten months, and not every guest that comes on the show was soliciting the heart healthy hustle to come onto the show but quite a few of them have been and it's a very humbling experience because when i started this show like i said i have hundreds and hundreds of rejections i have an excel file of how many times i've reached out to certain guests before they agreed to an episode and so to see the tide turn to where people are reaching out publicists are reaching out saying hey we would really like to get our person on your show when can we you know can we do this it's very motivating. So I wanted to just share that with you guys, let you know the show is progressing. The download numbers are actually increasing as we have kind of paused publications. And I think people, what's happened is are going back into the queue of existing episodes, checking out what they've missed, giving people a chance to catch up because I know life is crazy. It's hectic. It's the summer. Uh, routines are kind of going out the window with whether you're working from home, maybe you lost work, whatever the case may be. Um, I do want the show to be here for you. So we are going to start publishing once more and we have episodes in the hopper and I'm excited for that. So I did want to provide you with a brief a bit of an explanation as to where the show has been. Is it still going? Yes, it never stopped and never really um, uh, absolutely did not quit. Not an option. And we are excited to provide you with some incredible people who have come on to the show and shared their knowledge, expertise and wisdom. Again, the show is now focusing in on uh, health, money and creativity. And I think that's an exciting time because a lot of young professionals want tactical advice to what pertains to them right now. Uh, a lot of people, regardless of age, are, are always interested to learn more about finance and econo the economy, economics. Um, so we're not going to become a data analytic uh, podcast of talking about numbers and terms that nobody understands, but we will have financial planners on the show. We will have certified um, accountants. We will have certified 
financial planners coming onto the show, things like that, to where we're able to gain insight, gain knowledge, and not just be sold a sales pitch for a a mutual fund from Wells Fargo or something. So I want to have you guys know that. Also want to reinstate a sense of urgency uh, to you on your goals as we go into the final chapter of 2020. This year has been intense. It, It just has. It's been an intense, wild year uh, for everyone. It's been an amazingly good year for a lot of people. Whatever this year was for you, I do wish you the best. I hope that this show can continue to be a staple in your podcast library in what you're listening to. Um, please continue to provide me feedback directly. I'm always open to your, uh, my, my email is jonathan at theheartheathyhustle.com. Again, that's Jonathan at TheHeartHealthyHustle.com. If you think you know a person who would be a good fit for the show or there's someone you want to hear on the show you would like me to interview, again, email that person to me. I will reach out to them if you, I, if we do see it as a good fit. I do appreciate you listening. I appreciate you liking, sharing, and subscribing. There are many of you out there at this point, so I'm just very humbled, very grateful for that, and I will hopefully be able to continue providing you with what you're looking for in a podcast. And again... Feedback's welcome. Feedback's much appreciated. Otherwise, we don't know what to bring you. So that being said, don't let this show be about what I want to find out or learn about. Let it be about what you, the audience, wants to hear about, wants to learn about, the guests you want on the show, because that's my job is to be a conduit for you, the listener. Much love. I'm very confident you will enjoy the upcoming episodes. Godspeed. Check, check. This is your friend and your host, Jonathan Frederick. Today, I want to talk to you about something. It's jumped out at me on this page. I wrote this down in July of 2017, over three three years ago. Wow, time flies. It is 100% true for anyone in business, whether you are an entrepreneur, a sales professional, a service provider, and I'll jump right into it. Before doing so, I would really appreciate it if you would share this episode with anyone you think it would relate to. Right now, we have an absolute explosion of entrepreneurs emerging. Love this. Uh, I think people are pivoting due to COVID and um, you know, just having a lot of people have to stay home. And so maybe uh, one of you, if you're married or you know, let's say your spouse has to stay home because of the kids and one of you, you know, your household income is, you know, decreasing, whatever it is. I do not know your situation, but I can say looking at data that we are facing a, uh, I don't want to say a renaissance, what's the word? We're facing an amazing time where people are Etsy, you know, the online marketplace for, you know, bespoke uh, jewelry makers and just anything you can think of really being sold online. We're really in an interesting time right now. And I want to share something for all of you out there who maybe you're picking up a major focus into a side hustle, or you've started a business, or you're just working at your day job. This particular, this particular thing really applies to anyone who sells a service, provides a product and is in the sales world. This is huge. Here's what I wrote down. If there was a way to tell people or prospects prior to doing business with me that they could trust me, then I'd be rich. Now, I want to just address something. First and foremost, if you um, felt irritated by that statement, it's not, life isn't just about getting rich, but why do you work? Let me ask you a question. Why do you work five days a week or four days a week, whatever your schedule is? Why do you work? Oh, well, John, I have to uh, pay my bills. I have to get more money to invest. Why? You know, why do you work? I don't think there's one person out there who would say, I work and I would do it for free. No, we all work for money. So don't come at me with, oh, well, you know, life's not about getting rich. You go to work five days a week, it's probably to get paid. Whether or not you decide to get rich, that's on you. The cool thing about this statement, if there was a way to tell people prior to doing business with me or you that they could trust you, then you'd be rich. So what that means, and let's break it down. This is so cool because you can actually do this. When you look at this, pretend for a second, let's say you're in sales um, and you're an entrepreneur. Let's say you're the business owner. You need to be selling your product. Let's just say product X. You're selling product X to people. You need to find prospects. That's the biggest thing. Let's just say you found prospects. Now you need to have a consultation with them, a discovery essentially, where you're talking to them and kind of showing them, hey, what you're learning about them, 
So do you really need our product? Why? How will it help you? Etc. That person is a person, first of all. They're a human being. So they do not want to be sold. People hate it. BS filters are at all time high. In today's world, as a millennial, I can honestly say I feel the most successful sales professionals are those who are unattached. They know their stuff, but they really don't care about your business. And it, it sounds bad, but what I'm saying, they do care, but they're not going to, I think the best people out there, they're going to show that they care in the way that they treat you with respect and with the information you need, show you, hey, if this is a good fit, we're going to show you how and why very thoroughly and efficiently relay that info to you. But what I think is very interesting is if that person knew that doing business with you, they could trust you prior to doing that, signing on the dotted line, you'd be rich. And here's why. Because you'd be able to cut through all the noise. So you say, okay, well, can I actually do You can. We can actually do this. We can actually show people we don't know and p- prospects that they can trust you prior to doing business with you. Here's how. One, referrals. Referrals. That's the easiest, biggest, most valid social proof, if you will, that exists. Social proof. Refer- referrals, especially from friends and family. If I'm told by my buddy, hey, this doctor over here is great for joint pain or this the, uh, this dealership is great to give you a low price on a new vehicle. Like I'm going to go there because I was referred. Say, hey, is Scott here? Or hey, is Joe here? Because hey, is Alicia here? Because these people are people that my friends who I trust trusted and treated my friends with respect and gave them a good good deal. The next thing you can do after referrals, because sometimes people's personalities and what have you don't jive, is to humanize yourself right out of the gate. Humanize yourself. Make sure they know that you are a human. You're a person. One of the easiest, simplest ways to do this, to break down you know, just that awkward first touch um, vibe, is really just share quickly a quick statement of genuineness. So uh, authenticity. You want to just say, you know, oh, how's your day going? Cool. And then tell them something truthful. Be like, you know, this morning my dog got off the leash and, you know, I had to chase him down. He almost, whatever it is, you know, what I've been telling people is I'm working and I'm healthy because that says it all. That says it all. That doesn't exaggerate like, oh, I love my job. Like maybe you do, maybe you don't, but you're happy to be there. You're grateful to be working. Um, and you're saying so much. You're basically encapsulating the last seven months of our world and society in one quick sentence. I'm working insinuating, boy, am I glad I have a job still. A lot of people don't. And our economy's blowing up at the seams, whatever it is. I'm still working. I'm really glad about that. Oh, and I'm healthy. This is a double whammy. You're basically saying, I acknowledge COVID, I acknowledge this illness. I acknowledge there's a lot of people who have passed away. I acknowledge that it's destroying a lot of businesses. I acknowledge all of this. Well, the repercussions of it, I should say, are destroying a lot of businesses. Um, and you're basically sharing that in one quick sentence. So you're not getting down in the dumps. You're not going into it in too much awkward detail. You're not saying anything inappropriate. You are saying though, man, I'm a human and boy, am I just glad to be here talking with you today. And that immediately shows people that they can let down their guard because it's true. I mean, you know, this isn't about manipulation. It's about being true, truthful and connecting with people at an authentic level. So humanize yourself. Number one, referrals. What does a referral look like, though, in your field? What does that look like? Is it a person telling them? Is it a, is it a past client, you know, like emailing their friend? Is it, what is it? You know, what does a referral look like in your field, industry, business, whatever that is? Figure that out and nail it down. Next, humanize yourself. Humanize yourself. Say a quick statement, you know, share openly, nothing inappropriate, but just be real with somebody up front so that they can say, hey, okay, cool. Like, you know, yeah, you know, I have a dog too, whatever, you know, like make sure people know you are human because it's not about you. It's about them and how your business or product and service can serve and benefit them. Now, show past work with confidence. Once you go through the formalities, once you get the referrals, oh yeah, Scott told me about you. You're great. I would really like this is what I need. And you're listening. You're saying, mm-hmm, great. Tell me more. Why do you think we can help you? Whatever. Humanize yourself. The next thing after that is to show your past work with confidence. Say, we've done this for this company who's the exact same person as you are in, 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 in these variables and what they needed. We can help you too. I'm confident of that. Show them the work. Leave it on their plate. Let them decide what they will. The last but not least, and I'm sure I'm missing some things, so if there are some things you think will be improved on this, leave it in the comments down below. 
If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to write down something else you think will be absolutely crucial to showing a prospect that they can trust you right up front. Now, before doing business with someone, you can't know, K-N-O-W. It's hard and you cannot truly know that you can trust someone, <sighs> but you can absolutely show them every reason and excuse as to, boy, you absolutely sure can, you sure, you sure can trust me. And it's to really do them a favor so they can just kind of take a breath and relax and say, oh, I can trust this guy. I can trust this business. I need this service done. I feel much more comfortable with this person. You know, people would much rather go shopping with friends than with a salesperson, you know, much more likely to spend money, much more likely and happy and comfortable to be um, purchasing when they're with friends versus a, I don't know, some kind of awkward business relationship. Uh, so yeah. This is the last step. Be unattached to the prospect's response. Have zero selfish expectations. Just be unattached. Be unattached. I can share with you from personal experience, probably the most effective, I hate to use this word, but leverage that, and let's say you're in a sales professional role, from going to different car dealerships, just browsing and doing some fun test drives, I noticed that the people who I absolutely, it kind of drives you nuts, people who give you the time of day, they help you, but then at the end of the day, they are not trying to sell you on that car because their thing is this is a quality automobile. There will be another person in later today who if you don't buy it, they may buy it. And so that they, they try to do is almost generate scarcity. I'm not recommending that so much. I am recommending just be unattached to the prospect's response. Think about yourself as a buyer for a second. Let's just take the car dealership, the most hated experience of America, right? You go in, you're like, all right, I need to buy this car. You know, you try to put up, you know, show the sales professional who you don't trust, let's be honest. Like, I don't want to be pushed around. This is what I have to do. Like, you did all the research online. You're like, I'm not about to let this person get the better of me or let this dealership try to finance me at an absurd whatever so you're like all right i know what i'm gonna do and you're like really stressed out you go in you're uptight but you, you get done what you need to get done <sighs> imagine that salesperson just being at the end of the day just being like hey like you know it's cool i'm glad you came and checked out this car you know but you know i tell people this all the time if you know if, if you really want it just make sure to buy it because someone else is going to come ahead and go ahead and buy that because it's, you know, it's, you know, it is what it is. And, and in today's day and age, I think that's an effective way of handling it. It's to say, because here's the thing, stop. Here's the thing. We cannot convince other people. Like people do not want to be convinced. There are a few people who are irresponsibly out there shopping who kind of need, and they shouldn't be. So they kind of need that salesperson maybe to almost encourage them with excuses as to why they should waste their money or spend their money in an irresponsible manner. So they get a couple excuses from the sales. Oh, these has the, the best rims, the best trim level, whatever. And then they go ahead and buy it when they shouldn't have. That's on them. Salesperson's doing their job. You went into the dealership. If you're someone who's responsible, you know that you can and need to go ahead and make this purchase or whatever. You can go ahead and trust that process a lot more comfortably when you know that a sales professional is just doing their job and that they are not really going to convince you. What I'm saying is I found the most effective way to generate, oh, I don't want to say you want to generate scarcity, but the best way to handle, just be unattached to the prospect's response. Be unattached to that person's response. If they say like, hey, not really a good fit right now. If you really want to know why, just be like, hey, hardest part of my job is understanding, you know, why certain companies and industries don't think we can help them. Would you mind providing me a couple of details for my own edification so that I can understand, you know, how we can improve as a business and maybe meet your needs down the line in the future if it's a good fit, blah, blah, blah. That's fair. But be unattached. Just be like, you know, someone else is going to come along who really needs to buy this and they're going to buy it because they really need it. So it's not my job to always try to convince every last person that you need to buy it too. You need to buy it because maybe they shouldn't. It's your job to discover that and then un un uncover it and decide, hey, you know, this is a great fit and here's why and here's how we'll work with you. Be unattached though to that prospect's response. I'm not saying don't be dis... I am saying be organized. I am saying be methodical. I am saying, you know, be, uh, you know, 
I guess a word for that industry would be a nurturing thing where you're kind of there, but you're unattached to like, you're, you're keeping the lines of communication open, but just do not have selfish expectations. This episode is going too long. Woo. This episode is done. I wanted to share that with you guys. Think about that as you are going into business for yourself. If you're a sales professional, whatever the case may be, if you could tell people and really make them understand prior to doing business with you that they could trust you, then you'd be rich. Am I wrong? Put in the comments down below. If you agree, disagree, let me know why and provide some reasons. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, This is really something I believe to be true. I know multiple people who are skyrocketing to success because of this um, basically principle. I think it's a principle of, (laughs) I think it's true because, you know, you look at um, people in different roles, like look at um, any company, a service providing company. When they have a bunch of good reviews that are five stars and those well outnumber the one rogue review from some psychopath who left one star because you stepped on their grass the wrong way or something, you know, outside of that, like when you see those good reviews, you're like, oh, okay, wow, this is, this is legit. All these people from all over, from all different backgrounds, refer them with high regard that there's something to this. There's something to this. Now, I think person to person, you know, human contact referrals where you're speaking to someone are the most powerful. And I think that if you can get these to be generated on your behalf, just because of how good of a service you provide, how well you served your people or the people you do business with and how above and beyond you went for and with them, I think that that is when you really hit the sweet spot and that's when referrals keep pouring in. There's a compounding effect at that point. You don't have to focus on the mundane, arduous tasks of how do I get more business? How do I find more clients? How do I blah, 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 blah. That's such a major issue for so many companies and businesses. No one wants to think about that because it's a scarcity minded thing where it's like, are we going to survive? Are we going to be able to eat? It's like, no, it's like once you create that positive momentum swing to the other direction of referrals out like pouring in, you can basically sit back and not rest on your laurels, actually work even harder because now you got new clients, you got new referrals, you got new people coming in. You got to take care of all these people. You maybe have to delegate, got to hire people who can do what you can do, build out a team. And before you know it, that compounding interest of, you know, social capital and social proof and referrals is basically a tidal wave just that you're able to just surf. And yeah, you might fall off the surfboard occasionally with, you know, whatever it is, mistakes, errors, but then you get back on the board and you keep paddling and then you're back on that tidal wave again. So I think right now more than ever, referrals are most important to businesses' success. I could be wrong. Again, welcome your thoughts. This is the end of this episode. Live wide open and Godspeed. Fearless.